Hello, everyone. You've turned into the Indiana State Police Roadshow, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance, Cops for Kids, subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance, and brought to you by Tom Trial Productions. Tom Trial is off the side of here. Dave, can you see Tom? I see Tom and his smiling face. And he looked nice this morning. He does. He looks nice every he day. He looks good. He. Uh, we talked about that a couple of shows ago. He's just always looking dapper and, and sharp, and Shelly's yeah. really got a catch there, doesn't yeah. she? He almost threw something at you. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. I get hit in the back of the head. Well, Captain Dave Burson, Indiana State Police Public Information Office. First Sergeant Bill Dalton with District 52 Investigations. Thanks for coming in here, guys. Thanks for having us. Appreciate be you being here. Thank you so much. We're talking about something uh, very serious today and uh, a, uh, a uh, anniversary that's really not to be celebrated, but something that we're going to be talking about. Investigation of the, I guess, what has come to known as the Burger Chef case or Burger Chef murders in Indianapolis. And, and Bill Dalton, you've uh, got this case now. Can you give us a little background maybe on how, how you came about getting this case? <laughs> I... Uh in February uh, of this year, um, I was promoted to the first sergeant so um, at Indianapolis, and um, and I uh, took over from um, Stony Van, uh, who's had the uh, who had the position for 17, 18 years, I believe. Okay. And um, and he had the Burger Chef uh, investigation that he inherited, and uh, and after uh, Stony retired, uh, uh, I inherited the investigation. So so I've been uh, I picked it up in February, and then. Uh, and now I'm just trying to, to learn and understand. Well, let's get a little background on how this actually came about and how the state police got involved. And, and Captain Burson, were you around at that time? You were here at Indianapolis, and what was your position then? I've been around a long time, okay. but I wasn't on then. I, I started in 1980, and uh, th this happened in, in the uh, late latter part of the 70s. Matter of fact, I was in the Army when it happened. Uh, but it's a case that was still being very much talked about when I first came on the department. Uh, it's a case that has has remained unsolved, but not unworked, as, as uh, First Sergeant Dalton just indicated. And I, I think it's a testament to that that we don't give up. And anniversaries are just anniversaries, and they are very important to the families. But the families think about this every other day, not just on the anniversary. Mm -hmm. So we're using this time to put it back in the front of the general public's mind that this is still an open investigation. I, I think uh, First Sergeant Dalton's going to talk a, a little bit more about we have a, a window of time uh, for somebody to come forward if they want to clear their conscience. Uh, somebody out there knows what happened. Uh, and come forward, do the right thing. Uh, let these surviving family members uh, know the truth. Uh, let them put that chapter of this to a close. Uh, so that's what we're using this time for. Well, um, Bill, let's talk about a little bit about what we can talk about, what is out there for the public. Of course, there are aspects that we're not going to divulge and, and won't be because of the investigative part of this case. But let's talk a little bit about how this came about and, and how the Indiana State Police became involved. Uh, well, this, this occurred in November of 1978, um, and uh, it occurred at the uh, Burger Chef uh, on Crawfordsville Road in Speedway. Um, and, uh, and I mean to get to go into some, some of the uh, some of the details, and because of the course, it's it's been 40 years, and a lot of information has been released over the course of 40 years. Right. There's certain aspects of it that, investigative wise, we need to hold on to, and we will hold on to that information. But uh, but a lot of it is public. So um, in November 17th of 1978, uh, four employees um, working at the Burger Chef on Crawfordsville Road, and uh, around closing time, so somewhere between 11 and midnight. Um, unknown person or persons entered the uh, the Burger Chef, and um, and what was later determined that the um, uh, and the workers at the time um, were all were all just kids. Uh, yeah. The oldest uh, was 20 years old, and the youngest was 16. And um, so uh, Jane, uh, and I apologize if I don't have the pronunciation right. Jane Fret, uh, Mark Flemons, uh, Daniel Davis, and Ruth Shelton. Um, they were all uh, taken from the um, from the Burger Chef, and um, and were found. Uh, actually, this was that was on a Friday night. So on Sunday, the 19th, they were found in um, uh, in Johnson County, in Southern Johnson County, in a remote area, and um, all four had been killed. Um, 
and so that's that's the um, the initial information um, or of, of the Burger Chef uh, investigation. How Indiana State Police got involved initially that night of the 17th, a uh, a former employee or not excuse me not a former another employee of Burger Chef had stopped by around midnight or shortly after midnight and had noticed that the rear door was ajar and. Um, and had contacted police, and police had responded to the Burger Chef, and um, uh, and didn't determine, didn't know at the time um, why the kids would have left, uh, but didn't see anything criminal at the time. Um, so later that um, that evening, when the um, the workers weren't showing up at home, um, law enforcement uh, determined and began a missing persons investigation. Um, and uh, and then Speedway was the Speedway Police Department was the lead agency on that. But uh, uh, working the missing persons, my understanding, Marion County Sheriff's Department, Indiana State Police, and a law enforcement agency all begun looking for um, these four employees. Um, but on the 19th, as I as I said, um, they were discovered in, in Johnson County uh, by a citizen who who had noticed. Uh, Two of the victims um, deceased down there and had contacted, um, well, the Indiana State Police was contacted to go um, to begin an investigation. And then at that time, they discovered that these were our four employees who were um, were taken from, from Burger Chef. And I'm assuming, uh, and maybe you can answer this question, pro- probably in 1978, there were no video inside the store outside the store anything like that right no no we um we just take it for granted that that's that's stuff has always been around but uh but no there, there wasn't video taken you know there's there's not video cameras at gas stations and yeah um, or, or during at these stores and like there are now i mean it's a it's a great bonus we have nowadays but in 1978 that just wasn't around. this remote location that you talked about um was it very remote was this just uh, that that citizen happened to be out in that location, or could it be seen from the road? Or well, the, the citizen that that found it was actually a resident that was out for uh, for a walk. Um, they were off the road uh, into a wooded area, um, uh, and I, I don't remember offhand exactly how many uh, how many feet. Um, but it was a, a property owner um, down there at that time that that discovered uh, the bodies. And it, it is a rural area. There were a few houses. Things have changed. Uh, tremendously now, and uh, and the the scene is um, nothing is like it was at that time. Like it was in 1978. So this uh, possibly would this location had to been known. Uh, would they have been able to find it? Uh, I'm looking at. But yeah, and that's 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 a, an interesting theory. Um, and there's been a lot of conversation. We've had a lot of discussions. Um, I'm working with. Um, uh, I'm working with other uh, detectives with state police uh, on this investigation, um, but I've also uh, opened it up, and I'm working with a, a detective from Speedway, and uh, who. Uh, so we've had discussions, and and that's one of them coming up is uh, that area of of Johnson County. Is it known, or was it known to one of the perpetrators um, at the time? And. Uh, because it is a rural area, but it's not far off of 37. Okay. Um, so, um, so it's a theory, but it's not one that that I have a definitive answer for. Um, and, and can you talk about this? Their their vehicles was their vehicles located? Were they there? Were they utilized? Or well, that, that's an interesting point, Rich. The um, actually Jane's vehicle uh, that she had driven to work that night was not at the scene, or not at the Burger Chef. Her vehicle was relocated about a mile south of in, inside a neighborhood um, in Speedway, and um, and that fact kind of perplexes um, us and and trying to to figure out why because it was parked um, in the area of a park, but it also in a residential area. So um, and it's an interesting theory, and we've had several discussions on it. Um, did the did the victims ultimately leave in her vehicle to another location, um, or um, and then loaded into another vehicle? Was her vehicle taken to Johnson County? Um, and don't have an don't have a definitive answer on that. Right. Uh, but that that has perplexed uh, and I and I in the reports and and there's been lots of um, testing a, at the time and in lab and um, trying to. Um, 
to, to figure in or find any clues or anything um, in that vehicle, but it's um, it's a perplexing fact about this case of why was her vehicle moved. And hers was the only one that was. Yeah, yeah, there was another vehicle by an employee that was still on the scene. Um, now, what we believe in um, is that her vehicle was parked on the uh, east, south, east side of the building, opposite of where um, there were two witnesses that were, it was a Dunkin' Donuts just to the north and west of the Burger Chef that had um, two witnesses that they, um, or the two witnesses claimed that they saw two individuals and that's where everybody has seen the clean shaven man and the bearded man. Um, that's where those um, tips come from, was witnesses who were at the, um, the Dunkin' Donuts. And um, so, so they only took Jane's vehicle, which was on the, uh, the east side of the building. So it may have been because they were purposely trying to avoid the side where uh, those two witnesses were at. So. You know, and that's what brings us to the point here with, with First Sergeant Dalton having a fresh set of eyes, taking a look at things that have been looked at again and again and again, numerous theories from the, the the perpetrators were known that they weren't known that one of them was known and all of this information to to go through and painstakingly go through each piece of inter interview again and uh, bill rem remind me there's uh, how many binders on this case oh there's there's two dozen binders of uh, of case reports and um and evidence ups and um, there's a yeah. tremendous thousands of pages. Three ring binders that are that thick. And it was actually in 1978. We we're actually talking a literal paper trail. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and that's uh, and that's something that um, that um, that we're we're working through as well because it is three ring binders with 40 year old paper. So uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to make it uh, digital and getting all the information transferred over to uh, to digital copies. For one for historic. Uh, and the other is to be able to, to be able to um, search and cross move, reference, cross reference yeah. information. Yeah, this name, this name, this name here. Because when I look for the name, you know, Rich Myers in that report, I mm -hmm. have to remember which one of the two dozen binders Rich Myers' name was, as opposed to if it was on a uh, a PDF or an Adobe program, Searchable. I'd be able to to use the find function. Dave, are you getting a lot of media inquiries on this? I know we talked about. You know, this is a, 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 an anniversary. Is an anniversary, sure. but I'm sure they're probably. And, and I think, and it's no secret to people that watch the show on a regular basis that we tape the show in advance. And yeah, you know, we've had a number of inquiries, and, and the message that we've shared with them, we recognize the interest, and, and, and we're grateful for the interest. But we also want for Sergeant Dalton to be able to concentrate on going through this information, putting it together. So we we are planning to have a time where we'll gather the media at one time to be able to share with them. But I've had no less than a half dozen inquiries, most of them from local media. It's a case that strikes at the heart for the city of Indianapolis, for Speedway, and personally for myself. I worked at a burger chef when I was in high school. Uh, just, you know, so this happened you know, a year after I uh, went in the Army. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of friends that I had that I'm still in touch with today uh, have talked about this case. Yeah, this case was a, a Pretty much, I think, probably a nationwide case at that time uh, because of the yes. what happened and how that worked out. And uh, I'm sure you're probably going to be getting nationwide media after this breaks and starts coming around. Uh, but that happened. But, Bill, if somebody did have some information out there, what's the best way that we're going to have available for people to contact you or, or the Indiana State Police with that information? They can contact um, they can contact, contact Indiana State Police, um, and you can call into uh, the Indianapolis District. Uh, at 317-899 uh, and actually into investigations at 8510 uh, 317-899-8510 and, uh, and and leave your uh, leave your tip on there and then uh, a detective or myself um, will get back in touch with you um, there are several uh, we've received several tips and continue over the years um, have received different tips and we're in the process of following up on those uh, also uh, Crime Stoppers um, feel free to uh, to contact Crime Stoppers and uh, and let them know this is a reference to the Burger Chef uh, investigations, and uh, and that will that will get to me. Three one seven two six two tips, Crime Correct. Stoppers. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being here. A, a very somber um, road show, but something I believe we need to get out there. And, the, and like uh, you said, Captain Burson, somebody knows. Yes, somebody knows. So, Captain Dave Burson, Indiana State Police Public Information Office. First Sergeant Bill Dalton, Indiana State Police Detective Division, uh, District 52. Thank you for being here.
Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, Roger. Catch you next week. The Roadshow is out.